So you know how factorial works, right? You take a number like 5 and multiply it by 4, then by 3, then by 2, then by 1, and you get 120, which we write as 5 factorial. It starts small with 1 factorial equals 1, 2 factorial equals 2. But then it explodes really quickly, and by the time you reach just 4 factorial, you're already at 24, and 5 factorial shoots up to 120. Now here's where things get weird and kind of mind-blowing. What if I asked you to calculate 3 halves factorial? Like, what's the factorial of 1 and a half? Your first instinct might be to say, that's nonsense because factorial is defined as multiplying all the integers from n down to 1, and 1 and a half isn't an integer. So how could you even compute that? But mathematicians being mathematicians, they found a way to make sense of this question, and the answer involves one of the most beautiful functions in all of mathematics. The basic idea is actually pretty intuitive when you think about it. We know what factorial is for the integers. So we have these points. 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial is 6, 4 factorial is 24, and so on. If we plot this on a graph, we get these isolated dots, and the natural question becomes, can we draw a smooth curve through these dots that would tell us what happens between the integers? Now you might think, well, I could draw any curve I want through those points, and you'd be right. I could draw a nice smooth curve, or I could make it wiggle and oscillate between the points while still hitting each factorial value exactly. So we need some extra constraint to pick the right curve, and this is where the magic happens. The factorial function has this beautiful property that n factorial equals n times n minus 1 factorial, and we want our extended function to preserve this relationship not just for integers, but for all values. When you enforce this recursive property, along with something called log convexity, you get exactly one curve that fits. But how do we find this curve? Let's work it out step by step. We want a function f that satisfies f of x equals x times f of x minus 1, not just for integers, but for all x. Now, many functions in mathematics can be written as integrals, so let's try f of x equals the integral from 0 to infinity of some function g of t and x dt. If we plug this into our recursive property, we get integral of g of t and x equals x times integral of g of t and x minus 1. For this to work, we need g of t and x equals x times g of t and x minus 1. The simplest function that does this is g equals t to the power x minus 1 times some function h of t that doesn't depend on x. But wait, for our integral to converge, we need h of t to decay to 0 as t goes to infinity. The exponential e to the negative t is perfect because it decays fast enough, and when we differentiate it, we get negative e to the negative t, which works beautifully with integration by parts. So we arrive at the gamma function, where gamma of z equals the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the power z minus 1, times e to the negative t dt. So the relationship is gamma of n plus 1 equals n factorial, which means if you want 3 factorial, you plug in 4 into the gamma function, and if you want to know what 3 halves factorial is, you plug in 5 halves into the gamma function. When you do the calculation, 3 halves factorial turns out to be 3 times the square root of pi divided by 4, which is approximately 1.329. Pretty wild that pi shows up in there, right? But that's a topic maybe for another time. To see why this gamma function actually works, let's verify that it really does satisfy our key property. We want to show that gamma of z plus 1 equals z times gamma of z, and we can do this with a technique called integration by parts. Starting with gamma of z plus 1 equals the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the z times e to the negative x dx. We integrate the exponential part and differentiate the x to the z part. The boundary term vanishes because the exponential decay beats the polynomial growth, and what we're left with is z times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the z minus 1, times e to the negative x dx, which is exactly z times gamma of z. 
So our function really does extend the factorial in the most natural way possible. The gamma function shows up everywhere in mathematics and physics, from probability distributions to quantum mechanics. And now you know why. It's the unique smooth extension of the factorial function that preserves its most important property. Pretty amazing that by just asking what 3 halves factorial could mean, we stumbled upon one of the most fundamental functions in all of mathematics. And it all comes from connecting the dots in just the right way.